Hello and welcome to another tutorial. This one we're going to be looking at using date inside of JavaScript to put a couple of things dynamically into the footer of our page. I'm going to start by getting from paulcini.github.io a very, very basic start HTML file. Let's go ahead and download that. We'll then double click it and we'll wind up with a start folder. It's got an index file, a folder with no images, JavaScript folder with no JavaScript, and a CSS file with four files that are linked. The text editor that we're going to be using is a really, really basic one. It's called brackets. I'm going to go ahead and load this start folder into the left-hand pane so it becomes the working directory. Inside the index folder, down at the bottom, you can see I have a copyright, my name, and then the current year. The problem with doing it this way is that in a few months, when we roll to the next year, this date will be out of date. So we're going to replace it with a JavaScript-generated current year. So let's get rid of that. And we're going to use a span tag. Now the reason we're using a span tag is it's because it's an inline tag which means that the contents of this continues on the same line. It doesn't start over, kind of like a hard return. Now let's put in just some fake data. Let's save it. We'll go to our start folder, open our index file, and see what we have. There we can see the fake data from the span tag. Let's go ahead and give this span tag an ID. We'll set it equal to now a good name might be date or the date or year or current year, but I'm going to use a really obviously made up word called snowman so that you know and remember that this is a made up word by me. It's not a JavaScript special word. Let's save that. Next thing we need to do is create a JavaScript file. So let's do file new file save as. Let's call this scripts.js. We'll put it in the JavaScript folder on our desktop. Now we can see over here that when we open JavaScript, there's our scripts file and it's currently empty. Now we need to link that file to our index page. Just above the closing body tag, We'll do an open script tag. It stays empty, but we'll set the source of this equal to JavaScript and the scripts.js and save it. Now let's go test it and make sure these are connected. In the scripts file, we'll do document, which references the entire HTML page. And then we're going to look for an element which has an ID. Well, what is that ID? Remember, we called it snowman. Well, what are we going to do with this element with an ID of snowman? Well, we'll set the text of it, text content, equal to hello. So right now it says fake data, but when I load the page, it's been replaced with the word hello dynamically using JavaScript. Well, hello isn't really what we're after, but we now know that there is a connection between the index file and the scripts file. So that's good. So let's come up here and let's use let. And then we're going to, once again, we're going to make up a variable name, a word that we want. A good thing might be Y for year, or year, or the year, but I'm just going to call it carrot. So that's my word. We're going to set it equal to a new date. Well, let's see what this thing looks like. So let's take our carrot, and instead of putting hello into our page, let's put whatever's in carrot. So we'll save it, refresh it, 
And there you've got it, a full date, Monday, January, the year, the time, the time zone. Well, all I really want is the year. I don't want the rest. So let's create another variable, let, and we're going to make up another word here, hat equal caret dot get full year. And it's presented to us from brackets. And then we need a left and right parenthesis. So let's save that. We'll change caret and we'll show what's in the hat instead. Cross your fingers, hit refresh, and there's the current year only. All right, so let's come back here. I think you get the idea that I'm making up variable names, and these are not JavaScript reserved words. Ideally, instead of snowman, we could put the year. That would be a better ID name, which means that we got to go to our scripts and change this to the year, and it is case sensitive, so make sure it matches. And instead of caret as a new date, we could call it my date, and we could put my year. And if we're using my date here, then we need to use my date here to extract the full year from it. And if we're using my year, then hat needs to reference that. So we hit refresh and everything still works. Now you saw it flash there, maybe. I don't know if the video is picking it up, but it does flash very, very quickly. So which means that in our index file, probably don't need fake data anymore. We can get rid of that. And now it won't flash. It will simply appear. All right, another really cool thing that you can do is to automatically put the last time that this page was updated. That can have a good and bad effect. If you're constantly updating your page, it's good to let people know. If you haven't worked on this for a very long time, you may want to avoid this, but let me show it to you anyway. So in our footer, we have a copyright, we have a name, and then we have the year. Then we're going to do an entity, which is a bullet, a black dot, and then we're going to put another span tag. And this one will give an ID equals, quote, last updated. So LU. Okay, save it. Now let's go back to our scripts page. Document dot get element by ID quote, last updated. And we'll set the text of that equal to last updated, colon. Let's stop there. So we can see that in our index file, there is nothing inside this span tag. It's empty. But once we refresh it, we now have the dot, and we have the string last updated being put into the LU element. Well, in JavaScript, we have glue, and glue is a plus symbol, so we can hook two things together. In this case, what we want to hook together is the last updated date, and it happens to be native in JavaScript. So we type document dot last modified and it just does it for you. Save it, hit refresh, and there's the last modified, which is today because I'm working on it today. Amazing. Notice that last updated colon and then the date immediately follows. If I wanted to add a space in there, I could it simply comes before this quote. So space, and now there's a space. I hope this little tutorial has been helpful for you to understand how to get information from a JavaScript file into an index file 
by using an ID and how simple it is to use the date or the last modified date.